I now want to introduce you to the concept of leverage and then in future videos we'll talk about this more in terms of what leverage does and when it's good and when it's bad and we'll talk about it in a lot of different contexts. Right now I'll talk about it a little bit more in the context of a bank. So let's say I start off my bank again and I have 300 gold pieces of equity 300 gold pieces of equity and I use that let's say I use that for my building so building and that was a hundred gold pieces and then I have 200 gold pieces that I just put into my building just to start it off 200 gold pieces let's say I take a hundred gold piece deposit 100 gold piece and of course I have an offsetting checking account 100 checking account that those people can at any point use either to write checks or at some point they can come back and demand their money back let's say I make out some loans for different projects so let's say 300 gold pieces loan A and I do that just by giving person A or entrepreneur A or whoever took this loan out a 300 gold piece checking account let me just do one more loan. Let's maybe I say I make another loan for 300. Loan B, and I can give that. I could have also issued notes and all of that, but let's say I just give them a checking account. And we've explored reserve requirements and all of that. Let's think a little bit about leverage. And leverage is essentially how much assets do you control with a certain amount of equity. So in our example right now, what is our equity? Our equity our equity is equal to 300 gold pieces so that's equity right there let me do it in a different color just so that the equity stands out from the liabilities and how many assets are we controlling with that 300 gold pieces of equity so I see I have 300 400 700 thousand so assets are equal to 1,000 gold pieces. So a lot of times people, when they talk about leverage, you, you might hear someone say 2 to 1 leverage. Well, that means the, the ratio of the assets to the equity is 2 to 1. In this case, the ratio of our assets to equity, so we have, you know, it's assets to equity leverage is what people say. Leverage. In this case, it's 1,000 to 300, or what is that, 10 to 3? 10 to 3 leverage. You seldom hear 10 to 3 leverage. You'll hear people talk in terms of 10 to 1 or 2 to 1 or something to 1, but 10 to 3 is a, is a fair leverage ratio. And it tells you just how many assets, these are our assets right here, we're controlling with a certain amount of equity. And there's a bunch of, there's a, 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 I guess a very good reason why a bank wants to do this, because if it's making money, if it's making more money on its assets than it's paying on its liabilities, in theory, a bank will want to take on as much leverage as possible, right? Because with this original 300 investment, every time it adds some assets and some liabilities, it's going to make a difference. It's going to make the spread on that money. And so it wants to keep doing that. But there's a downside to leverage. Because what if the bank, what if some of these loans aren't so good? And let me erase what I just drew. What if some of these loans just don't turn out to be so good? So leverage, when things are good, when they go on the upside it kind of multiplies how much money you're going to make but as you're going to see in about a second on the downside leverage also multiplies the loss you would take so in this situation what happens if I have a if I had a 30 percent loss let's say let's say I have a 50 percent loss on these loans that I made in a world without leverage so if I didn't have all of this leverage if I just had the same amount of assets and equity so in, in an example like this where my assets are equal to my equity so 300 and I just have 300 of assets if my assets go down by 50 percent notice that here I have no liability so this is all equity and this is all assets in this example if my assets for whatever reason I take a loss if they go down by 50 percent my new balance sheet looks like this let me scroll down a little bit my new balance sheet will look like this 150 and 150 so my equity also went down by 50 percent I took a 50 percent loss because maybe I made some bad investments but now that I have leverage what happens if the value of my assets get written down by you know at some point I, I determined that loan B they're probably not gonna pay up and loan A maybe won't pay up so the value of my assets go down by 50 percent so I have a thousand 
of assets. So essentially, I'm writing down my assets by 500. So let's say that I think loan B is only worth, so if I'm going to write down by 500, let's say I, I think this is only worth 50, and I think that this is only worth 50. Because for whatever reason, maybe I gave these loans out to buy, to build uh, real estate, or, or these were loans to subprime individuals. Who knows? What, whatever loans these were, they just weren't good loans. And I realized I'm not going to get 300 gold pieces back. I'm only going to get 50 gold pieces back. But in this situation, what does my balance sheet now look like? Now that I had leverage, my balance sheet looks like this. I have a hundred in terms of the building itself, then I have 300 of gold deposits, 300 of gold, that's this part right here, and then that first loan shrinks to 50 only, and then that second loan shrinks to 50. So now what are my total assets? This is 50 and this is 50. So I have 100 plus 300 plus 250, so it's 100. So I have 500 of assets, which is consistent with what I said, that our assets go down by 50%, because I had a 1,000 of assets before. And then what are my liabilities? Well, I owe this, this 300 checking account, this 300 checking account, because you know he might have written checks to other people, so it's not necessarily the person, same person that I lend it to initially. But I have, let's see, 700 of liabilities. 700 of liabilities. So notice, I now have negative equity right because assets are equal to liabilities plus equity well if my assets are 500 and my liabilities are 700 then what is my equity well my equity is going to be minus 200 so essentially I'm broke this bank is out of business and in this situation there's a very good reason for people to want to get their money back there's a very good reason to have a run on this bank because frankly even if you gave this bank all the time in the world this bank is not going to be able to pay back its money even if it were able to offload these loans it still does not have enough money to satisfy all of the demand deposits or all of the liabilities and this situation is called insolvency insolvency let me do that in another color insolvency and that just means you don't have the money. You're not good for it. Remember, when we talked about the reserve ratio, that dealt with illiquidity. You wanted to make sure you had enough gold left aside that when people came and said, oh, I want my gold back, that you had gold to give it to them. But if by chance people asked for more gold than you had, it doesn't mean you're out of business. You just essentially have to tell them, oh, well, can you wait a little while while I deal with my assets and wait for those loans to get paid back? You're still solvent. Insolvency is when you actually, because of bad investments, you actually end up with less assets than you do have liabilities and then there's nothing left over in the equity column and that's what leverage is a measure of because if you have really high leverage then you you know notice when we had no leverage you could take a fifty percent loss really easy but now that we had even ten to three leverage even a fifty percent loss wiped us out and if you had ten to one leverage then even a ten percent loss would wipe you out so leverage really is a measure of how much cushion do you have to take losses in the future Anyway, before I run out of time, and, and in the next video I'll actually talk about how leverage is regulated within banks, but just to give you another measure of leverage, because this le me measure I gave you, you know, if someone says 10 to 3 leverage, it's assets to equity. Another one that people often use, often in the investing world, is debt to equity. But it's really a measure of the same thing, because if someone tells you debt to equity, you can figure out the assets to equity. But in this case, the debt to equity ratio, before I took any losses, it was what? my liabilities are this you can view that as debt right because I owe these people that money is 700 and my equity is 300 so it's 7 to 3 is my debt to equity ratio anyway see you in